Hi everybody and welcome, it's Wrangler here and in this video I'm going to look at that piece of software that I'm pretty sure almost every Amiga user will have used at some stage or another and it's this, which Amiga. We're all very familiar with it, it goes off, blanks the screen and then comes back with a wealth of information about the, our Amigas and the hardware in them. Uh, originally created by Harry Sintonen, Piru, in other words, it provides all this information here that we can see. But as a matter of fact, which Amiga hasn't been updated for really quite some time, 15 to 20 years since the last revision by Piru. And you can see that there are some gaps in the things that it is reporting. For example, these question marks here about the PowerPC chip that I'm running on my machine, simply because uh, the Amiga hardware has moved on in the intervening period. Now, because of that, a, another user, a mate of mine, Trickster, hi Trickster, if you're listening, uh, egged me on, you might say, encouraged me to have a look at which Amiga and see whether anything could be done with the source code. Now, as it turns out, I can't find the source code for the very final version of Piru's Witch Amiga 1.3.25. The last version where I could find the source code was 1.3.23. So that's what I worked from. And that's a little bit older, 20 years old now. And what I've done is to update and extend that. And I'm going to show you that now. Let's give that a go. As usual, it goes away, does its thinking, and then comes back with information about the machine I'm running. Uh, first of all, I bump the version number up to 1.4, and the basic layout is exactly what we know and love from times past. But let me just walk you through some of the changes that I've made to extend which Amiga and bring it a little bit more up to date. Some of them are very apparent from just looking at the information readout here, and some that I'll come back to at the end are under the bonnet. First up, we are looking at the CPU in our machine, and particularly the speed of it. Uh, in the original version of Witch Amiga, this came up with incorrect answers and much lower answers than was actually the case for certain ACA CPU cards, apparently. Um, so I'm told, I don't have one myself, but that was what I was told. I have reworked the CPU speed code so that that now gives an accurate reading for those ACA cards. Secondly, there have been quite a lot of changes I've made to better support PowerPC cards if you have one of those in your Amiga. On the one hand, if you're using a Phase 5 Cyberstorm PPC card that you've had heavily upgraded, then you might have found that you had incorrect PowerPC speed readings from which Amiga. And I think that simply came about because either Warpos or PowerUp hadn't anticipated much faster PowerPC chips being put on those Cyberstorm cards. So I've reworked that code and that should now give you the correct PowerPC Cyberstorm PPC speed reading. But a lot of the other changes I've made on the PPC side are for PCI based PPC cards, things that we just didn't have back when Piru was writing the original Witch Amiga. So what are the changes I've made there? Well, first of all, Witch Amiga is able to identify the CPU, the PowerPC CPU uh, number. So you can see here I'm running a 7410 PowerPC chip. Secondly, it's able to show both the speed of the PPC correctly, but and also the 68000 series CPU I'm running, both get those numbers right at the same time, which didn't work on the original Witch Amiga. Incidentally, if you happen to have a 750FX PowerPC chip and you've either over or underclocked that, uh, again, which Amiga will get the, the uh, speed reading correct, taking into account that over or under clock. And finally, if we just skip down a little way down here where the memory set, uh, readouts are, uh, I've inserted a readout of the PowerPC me uh, local memory for the PCI cards 
uh, and you can see here for me rounding that up that's 256 megabytes that I've got on you know, my local Power PC card. So a lot more information for PPC users uh, and a lot more accurate information with that. What else have we got? Well, let's just cast our eyes down here beyond the custom chip readouts and we've got a new row, other chips. This is what I've added in and this was the original suggestion from Trickster, which is, was it possible to introduce into Witch Amiga a way of identifying whether there's a super DMAC chip in the Amiga? So in other words, is it an A3000 class machine with that DMAC chip? And if you can find the DMAC chip, is it possible in software to identify the revision of that chip, whether it's the very common Rev2 or the really rare Rev4 chip? Well, the answer is yes, it is, and which Amiga can now do that. Uh, and if it finds a Super DMAC, it will report that information here. Same thing goes for DSP chip. If you happen to have a DSP3210 on your uh, Amiga, then again, which Amiga will report that. Uh, and you can see that that has uh, been picked up in the ID readout of what my Amiga actually is. This is my AA3000 Plus that I'm running here. And what else have we got? We cast our eyes down to the readout for the ROM and Workbench versions. Since Piru wrote Witch Amiga, we've had various updates to those. So Witch Amiga will now be able to detect and tell you about Kickstart and Workbench versions 3.1.4, 3.2, and 3.2.1, which brings us right up to date. So those are the visible changes to which Amiga. I did mention other changes under the bonnet, so let me just briefly tell you about those. I think the most important ones are ones that improve the stability of which Amiga. There were various hardware setups where Either people were getting gurus uh, being thrown when running Witch Amiga or just complete hangs. Now, I'm not saying I've solved all of that and uh, maybe more on that in a moment, but I've certainly been able to cut down some of the situations where those kinds of things happen. Some of those were caused by infinite loops in some of the testing that Witch Amiga was doing when uh, it was testing for certain exception errors, some were illegal instruction errors themselves happening, causing a guru. But at least some of those I have now fixed. And to give you a specific example, which Amiga should now stop hanging, not hang at all, if you happen to have a 68030 CPU in your machine along with an MMU, you should now get the complete readout as we're looking at on screen here. Now, will Witch Amiga ever be perfect? Answer, no, it won't, I'm afraid. There is too much hacking going on when Witch Amiga runs to try and identify all the different hardware on all the different variations of Amigas. There's too much hacking going on for that to work on every machine. So apologies if you are still getting hangs when you run Witch Amiga 1.4. I'm afraid that there are just too many combinations of different hardware settings to make sure to trap absolutely everything. The second area where Witch Amiga will never quite be perfect is in identifying the version of your Amiga here at the bottom. And the simple reason for that is it's not possible always to tell in software the difference between certain Amiga versions, for example, the A500 and the A2000 from a software perspective look just the same. Witch Amiga will have a go depending on the kinds of cards that you happen to have installed. But even then, it won't always be able to tell and could guess incorrectly. It's just one of those things that we have to live with, I'm afraid. So that brings me almost to the end. A couple of things to mention before I finish. First of all, where can you get this version of Witch Amiga? The answer to that is it's out now on Aminet as under the name Witch Amiga Extended. So do look out for that. And secondly, I would like to thank all the beta testers on a1k.org who helped me through this process with reporting back on whether changes were working or not. Many thanks to all of you who contributed to that. And of course, the final thanks should go to Harry Sintonen, 
who created the wonderful Witch Amiga program in the first place. Without him, none of this would be possible. And even now, most of the code to Witch Amiga is Harry's original code. So thank you very much for such a wonderful program. I've updated it slightly to bring it up to date to 2022. Do look out for it on Aminet and otherwise do subscribe to this if video if you want to see more videos just like this one. That's it for now. Back next time. Bye.